Hey, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores coming with a quick report. And I just wanted to talk about a lot of the big changes that are happening in Washington, both on the field and off the field. Actually, pretty literally, too, as far as on the field goes. The field that players will be playing on will be new. And also, I want to take a look at how Ron Rivera is already making a huge impact on who wants to even play for this team. The culture is definitely changing. And I'm going to talk about some prime examples. Without further ado, man, let's get it. All right, first of all, I want to talk about this new grass that Fade X Field is getting. I mean, y'all remember that 49ers game a couple of years ago, man, with them sliding around after they won and things like that. We can't have that again. First of all, we can't play like that. But also, our field just can't be that embarrassing. I mean, they're out there slipping and sliding after a victory on our home turf. That was wild. That was one of the most embarrassing losses that I can remember as far as a team celebration at the end. And we've been getting jokes about our dirt and us spray painting our field for forever but now they're finally doing something about it and this is going to be the first reconstruction to this level that fedex field has had since the stadium is opened in 1997 this is the biggest reconstruction it's ever had since the stadiums even existed they'll be replacing more than a foot of grass and soil at fedex field this week this process is expected to take around two months and the team officials say it should allow the grass to hold up through the end of the team's lease in this stadium 2027 and then that's a whole another debate on whether they're gonna end up renewing that lease in FedEx Field or where they moved to DC where they moved to Virginia somewhere else in Maryland but until 2027 while we're still playing at FedEx Field at least we're gonna have some new grass to play with and remember we've sustained a lot of injuries on our grass I mean even with RG3 where he tore his ACL in his right knee really not even doing much in that 2012 playoff game against the Seahawks Heads groundkeeper Pete Benevento and his crew will remove not just the grass layer on top, but 14 inches of topsoil and subsoil. That's approximately 5,000 cubic yards of just pure earth, which adds up to 500 dump trucks. I mean, they're going to strip the field down all the way to its heating system. And Chris Bloyer, the team's senior vice president for operations and guest experience, said that the heating system is still good. Like, they're not going to replace that, but they're going to replace everything above the heating system. Bloyer said quote we're moving the existing irrigation system the existing drainage system and we're replacing all of that with brand new systems and then new sod renovations in prior years were sod and some elements of the root zone this is an entire renovation down to the bottom down to the foundation if you will if you think about it like a house unquote and once the playing surface has been removed 500 tons of soil more than two miles of drainage pipe and a new irrigation system will be installed and then it'll all be topped by game on grass a type of proprietary bermuda grass developed by carolina green that has been installed at stadiums like the eagles the chiefs and the titans and they've also handled the panthers practice field i mean other teams players other teams coaches have gotten on us about how bad our field has been they've been upset about it that has also added to why it was a little bit harder to get free agents to come here i mean we replaced our medical staff our training staff and of course that helped but i mean of course players know which fields are the best to play on and would you prefer to play on a terrible field maybe once every year maybe twice every year maybe once every four years or would you prefer to play there eight games a year and that definitely had something to do with even if it may be small it had something to do with our inability to bring in free agents these past few years up until ron rivera got here which i'm definitely going to speak about next and then since we were getting new grass this made me curious about like whether players prefer to play on grass or turf and then through my research at least back in 2010 that's the most recent poll that's been done that actually matters and have polled enough people they polled every player in the league back in 2010 and 89.7 of them said that artificial turf is more than likely to shorten their career 89.1 percent said that they are more sore after playing on a synthetic surface and 82.4 percent said fake grass is more likely to contribute to injury and they said that arizona had the best grass field and that pittsburgh had the worst but there you go over 80 percent of players no matter which way they worded the question prefer grass over turf fake grass or anything like that so i'm pretty sure that it has a lot to do with why the burgundy and gold are going with grass again but they're just gonna do a better job at maintaining it 
and just even from the foundation up they're gonna put in a better system for the grass so instead of taking the easy way out and getting turf because i believe turf is just easier i mean it's less maintenance and it's harder to go wrong like turf is just gonna be this steady not good but not necessarily terrible type of field environment whereas grass can be the best or it can be the worst if you don't maintain it and we're shooting for the best which i appreciate not taking the easy way out not being lazy spending more money for a better product on the field and again i'm pretty sure it's gonna have long-term benefits and they're expecting it to last through 2027 at least until this lease ends so that's really interesting also but moving on and this is the culture part that ron rivera has brought man did you know that even after ron rivera stressed that workouts are voluntary the washington football team still had 76 out of 90 guys that attended the start of phase two of the offseason program as of monday every player including those who did not attend communicated their intentions with ron rivera beforehand so even the guys that did not attend at least hit up ron rivera and was like this is why i'm not going to be there for voluntary but of course they'll be there for mandatory but that's still crazy even with covid19 and even ron rivera stressing to them like if you don't want to come you don't have to come it's not going to be held against you or anything like that 76 out of 90 guys still showed up that shows that they're ready to work that shows that they're buying into the culture that shows that they're ready to do whatever it takes to make this team and to leave an impact ron rivera is definitely having a strong and positive influence on this team and not even just players that are already on the team but just getting players here charles leno our recent left tackle signing 2018 pro bowler said that he signed here because of Rivera. William Jackson, our lockdown corner, Daryl Roberts, our interesting, versatile chess piece in the defensive back group, has played a lot of slot, a lot of free safety, a lot of strong safety, and outside corner. So it's going to be really interesting to see if he makes a team. But both of them said that they came here for Rivera and because his defensive line is great. So that just makes me excited that guys from other teams are taking notice on what we're doing. Guys on other teams are seeing what Rivera is building, whether it be through the players or the culture, the coaching staff, whatever and they want to play for us and like i've been saying in several videos several live streams even when we used to get free agents back in the day they would tax us they would come here and charge us the most money a mix of how bad the field was so they were pretty much bracing for injury and how bad our training staff was also how bad our coaching staff was they would pretty much sign here like well I don't really expect to win many games i don't expect to win the super bowl but i'm gonna get the most money out of it as i possibly can but now guys like william jackson and curtis samuel are taking slightly less money than they could have gotten on the open market to come play for us because they know that we're building something truly special and that's the ron rivera effect right there if i've ever seen it i mean just imagine how guys like dj swearinger would have been if they played under this coaching staff and this culture how much more dj swearinger would have bought in we missed out on a lot of good players just from our coaching staff not having the right culture in place and i'm very excited about the fact that we'll no longer make those mistakes and then lastly i want to talk about the diversity of this team as well with dan snyder out of the way basically just writing jason wright on the business side and ron rivera on the football side just blank checks to basically do whatever they want to do whatever they see fit the washington football team has slowly turned into the most diverse football franchise of all time going from one of the least diverse i mean at one point in time we were violating the rooney rule and then the the environment was reportedly hostile for women there wasn't much racial diversity gender diversity and now we're the most diverse and inclusive franchise in football we have a black team president in jason wright literally the only one in nfl history and then he's as young as he is too which is also crazy so it's not even just race and gender it's also age scott turner jason wright as far as age goes but then we also have a black general manager in martin mayhew one of only five including three that were hired this cycle ron rivera our head coach is latino he's one of only four head coaches in the entire nfl of any color and we also hired the first full-time female assistant coach who also happens to be black and jennifer king we also have a black senior vp of player development we have a black chief people officer julie donaldson is a female senior vp of media and content we have a black and female head of digital media who runs the washington twitter and everything and i'm not sure if people noticed this a few weeks ago but we also went and hired 
the NFL's first Latina coordinator of football programs. Natalia Duranis, she's the third woman to ever have this job. Again, the first Latina woman to ever have this job. And she'll work with and help coordinate schedules across various departments within the team, from medical to scouting. She'll work very closely with Ron Rivera. I mean, it's crazy. We're the most progressive team in NFL history. We are the first team ever in NFL history to have minorities as a head coach, a GM, and a president at the same time. And don't forget that the Burgundy and Gold launched its Black Engagement Network as part of the franchise's efforts to strengthen its commitment to Black employees through professional development and career management. And Dan Snyder basically just asked, how much do you need? And he's letting Doug Williams and all of those guys go and run that on their own. They're running it how it should be ran with their vision, their initiative. And Dan Snyder, the guy with the money, just put the money behind it that they need it. So I love the way this team is looking going forward with the new field, the new coaching staff, the new front office, the new culture. It's only bright days ahead, y'all. We'll see about being Super Bowl contenders and winning rings. We'll see if that happens sooner or later. But one thing's for sure, as of today moving forward, we're a team that players want to play for. We're a team that players that are already here want to buy in and maybe even be willing to take less money to stay here to contribute to a potentially Super Bowl winning team. We're a team that minorities, whether it be through gender, race, age, would love to work for and play for. We're potentially building the best franchise in NFL history. We just got to go show it on the field now. We're winning off the field easily. Off the field. We got it, hands down. Now we just got to go win on this field, man. But yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Just wanted to talk about a lot of those topics. Been keeping track of everything they've been doing. But once they went and announced what they're doing with the field, I had to go ahead and put everything together and put this video out. So please get in the comment section and let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video. Please like this video if you liked it, if you learned anything. Please subscribe if you haven't hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get a notification every time I release an informative and opinionated video like this one. Like I keep telling y'all, be on the lookout for the film sessions for every draft pick in this draft class, including undrafted free agent rookie running back Jared Patterson. And as always, man, I really appreciate all of the support, man, big time. Big shouts out to everybody that donates to the channel. Big shouts out to all of my sponsors, especially my Pro Bowl sponsors, whose names you see scrolling on the screen right now. Big shouts out to my one All Pro sponsor and Jaden. Man, I really appreciate all y'all. I'll catch y'all later. I'm out.